Maps of content are an excellent way to centralize a bunch of notes around a singular topic inside of your note-taking system. Typically, maps of content are a linear outline style sort of note, but I've been coming around to the idea of using Obsidian's Canvas feature to build out maps of content of this sort. If you're not familiar with what a map of content is or how I'm going to use uh, Obsidian's Canvas feature for this, we'll dive into that in today's video. But first, if you're new on this journey of personal knowledge management, I have a free resource available for you called PKM Kickstart. If you're wondering what the heck PKM is or how to get started with it, what apps you should use, what skills you should focus on building, PKM Kickstart covers this in a five-day email only course. All you have to do is sign up at the link in the description below and you'll start receiving all of the emails for it. With that, let's dig into Obsidian and Canvas maps of content. So if you're not familiar with what a uh, Obsidian Canvas is, it's basically Obsidian's whiteboarding tool. You can see you can add cards and you can add arrows that connect. You can also add direct notes in here um, and you can add media in here as well, which we'll see in just a minute. A map of content, uh, which I've talked about on the channel before. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here in the corner. Uh, but a map of content is basically a note that exists within a heavily linked system like Obsidian that functions in one of two ways. Really, a map of content can be used as a place to collect and process your thoughts and learnings on a specific topic. Say you're just learning about FPV drones and you want to figure out what all the pieces that you need, all the components you need to order in order to get started, what are some training resources to get you going, sims that you can use, so on and so forth. You can use a map of content co to collect and process through all of that information. A map of content can also be used as a map to the knowledge that you've formulated on a topic. So this is what a longer standing or more mature map of content ultimately becomes inside of your note-taking system. It's similar to a table of contents, kind of, but it can be used in a lot of different ways other than just a list of notes and outlines to get you to different parts of your vault. For example, I have this marketing map of content that I have created uh, in the past when I was learning a lot about marketing. So you can see that I've actually split this off into multiple maps of content um, across lots of different topics, subtopics around marketing. So you can see I've got on advertising, community marketing, content marketing, Google Analytics, social media marketing, and so on and so forth. Uh, a marketing seminar was a course that I took a few years ago, and then there's some general articles and source material that I took notes on as part of this. So this is a, at a high level what a typical map of content can look like. It is a place where you can start to gather your thoughts. Uh, I split off into subtopics here because it was easier to organize that way, but really you can launch into a topic area of your vault very quickly and easily from one place. This is a mature uh, map of content. Well, I'll show you what I'm thinking about in Canvas for building these out in just a minute. I have been coming around to this idea of using Canvas for these maps of content because basically it's a built-in whiteboard. And I think this could be the perfect visual first map of content. So what do I mean visual first? Well, you can see it on the screen here. You can draw arrows and connect. You can add in media directly into the map of content or the canvas. You can add notes directly into it. You can create notes from a canvas. And then you can connect via arrows. In, in many ways, if you're a visual thinker, and I like to think visually sometimes, think of it like a mind map. So a mind map starts with a central node and you have a lot of branches that come off of it. An obsidian canvas-based map of content can very well fit into that mode of thinking. It's a little bit more freeform than most mind mapping software, but it's something that you can consider. There are some downsides to this though. For example, if we back out here real quick, you see I have all of these nodes in the canvas connected with arrows. None of these arrows actually link the notes together. So this is a note, this is a note, but this arrow does not create a link between the two of them. 
So if you're leaning heavily on a map of content to link ideas together, unfortunately, you'll have to still make the links in the note itself, the note body itself. But if you really just wanna have a visual place to show how the ideas are connected together versus having it connected in your graph view, a map of content on Canvas would work just fine for that. Large maps may be hard to navigate because they're just more visually busy. And this isn't for everybody. Not everybody loves visual thinking. Some people love more linear, orderly thinking. Visual mind maps or visual maps of content like this can be messy uh, and they can take a little time to sift through. Now that we've got some of the basics out of the way around what we're thinking about maps of content in Obsidian Canvas, let's jump over to one that I have started recently on 3D printing. So this is my pretty basic 3D printing focused map of content at this point. I've got a few things. This is a subject, I just bought a 3D printer and I'm just starting to learn about all the different things that I need to do and learn and, and tweak with my 3D printer. Um, and so you can see I have the root node here, 3D printing, and it goes off into a couple areas. First and foremost, we have a couple notes focused on printing and then onto printers itself. So we'll start over here with printers. I've created this note on 3D printers for beginners. And I've listed out a few here. I've done some research. Reddit is a really good spot to learn from other people what works and what doesn't work. And I've noted here that it looks che like cheaper printers means more tinkering and more expensive printers mean less general frustration. I ultimately did buy a cheaper printer which will require a little bit more tinkering. Um, the Creality Ender 3 V2 and because I've learned in the research that the setup instructions that are in the box for the printer aren't all that great, um, I've added a video here straight from YouTube that I can come back to on setting up the printer. I've also created a note here where I can add in my experience with this printer so that I can take some notes for the future and maybe some ideas that I might wanna consider if I buy another 3D printer going forward. Um, I've also split out into filament because you need filament for 3D printers. And I've just noted that I'm trying this specific brand of filament and the colors that I have at first here. This can be a log of sorts of different things that I'm interested in tracking or just wanting to make notes on for the future so that when I come back to this topic, when I'm working on 3D printing and learning a little bit more, I can do some more research in those areas. Having it front and center for me when I'm working on a specific thing really helps me to stay focused and really helps me to dig into the areas that actually matter to me. Now, the other side of 3D printing is the actual printing itself. Um, everybody talks about benchies, which is a kind of a slang word for the area. A benchy is a printing benchmark that's designed to help push the printer to its limits to know where it needs tweaking so that you can make adjustments so that prints don't fail, especially larger prints that you're going to do in the future. And you need to know where to find some 3D models. The other thing that is not on here is, we're just gonna add a card here, is 3D modeling. And this might go off into its own map of content in the future. So as you can see, this is a pretty small map of content right now, but this is the place where I'm starting to flesh out some of these ideas. Uh, in a visual context here, you can group ideas a little bit more easily, um, at least visually anyway. You can use headings and that sort inside of a linear note in Obsidian. But I think this idea, at least to start off with, of trying to section these off, um, put them off into different directions, like a mind map would, um, it is an interesting approach anyway to assembling a map of content. So I'm curious what you think about this. Are you using maps of content inside of your Obsidian Vault? Have you experimented with using Canvas for these before? I'd love to hear from you. 
And if you're really interested in leaning whole hog into this visual based approach, there are some other tools out there that may be a better fit than Obsidian for this. Heptabase and Scrintle are two that come to mind. We've talked about Heptabase on the channel before, and if you're interested in getting a quick walkthrough and demo of Heptabase, check out this video here.